This is from a map that I did and just showing Masonic lodges during the revolutionary time period. The Freemasons were the ones who planned and carried out a large share of the American Revolution and uh, 33 of the 35 signers of the Declaration are Freemasons. There are over 800 <coughs> fraternal organizations in this nation. Essentially all of them have start, been started by the Freemasons. Many religious groups and religions have been started by the Freemasons. <coughs> and if we look at this Scottish Rite Journal page, we see that they say Freemasonry has a world power. And they see this in 1921 when this was written, um, that there was a struggle between Freemasonry and the Catholic Church. This was one of those many controlled struggles that the uh, Illuminati has given us. Well, it's no longer that situation anymore. In 1993, in one of my newsletters, I uh, listed hundreds of top Vatican officials and their initiation dates and their secret Masonic member no membership numbers. This is just a small section of the list. And here's the Catholic Church with the Illuminati all-seeing eye in it. <clears throat> now there are a number of top 13 families. You've got Astor, Bundy, Collins, DuPont, Freeman, Kennedy, Lee, Onassis. Now Reynolds is not one of the top 13, but it's close up there. Rockefeller, Rothschild, Russell, and then you've got your 13th Illuminati bloodline, which is the Merovingian bloodline, which believes that they are descendants of Christ and descendants of Lucifer in the house of David. And uh, you've got the Van Dyne family. So these are your top Illuminati families. Now, we're going to take a break from getting an overview of things and we're going to focus in on just one little time point in history, the Civil War, and we're going to look at three men at that time period. This is so that we can see how the small relates to the big. We're going to look at Abraham Lincoln, Ulysses Grant, and John Brown. John Brown was an abolitionist who um, tried to arm the slaves and by doing so provoked the South to want to have an armed rebellion. Abraham Lincoln ran on an anti-slavery platform and his election provoked the South to secede and Ulysses S. Grant was Lincoln's best general and the greatest Civil War a hero. <coughs> now the Illuminati wanted to create an American Civil War. The United States was getting too big and too rich, so they wanted to divide and conquer. And they wanted to bring us into debt and create a national bank. And they were also looking forward to all the war profits that they were going to get, running drugs and munitions and other things, but they needed people to implement their plan. And we're only going to look at three people, and of those we can only give, due to time, a fraction of what could be said. So let's look at the first person, let's, uh, let's look at John Brown. <clears throat> John Brown was a Rosicrucian and a Mason and so was his father. Now there was a Rosicrucian named William Lloyd Garrison and he created the Anti-Slavery Society in 1832. He also um, became a member of the Order of the Rose in England in 1834. There was another Rosicrucian, uh, George Lippard, who was a member of the Brethren of Light, and it was he who taught John B Brown to be rabidly anti-slavery. Now John Brown didn't know much about the scriptures, but he was traveling through a Mormon settlement, which ties into all of this, but we can't go into it. And they taught him 
their blood atonement doctrine where you pay for the sin with your own blood. And so he thought in his warped mind that if somebody sinned or he did something he didn't like, that gave them him the right to blow them away with a shotgun for the wages of sin is death. John Brown was a murderer and so was his sons. But he was a common man. He only became what he became because he had a conspiracy behind him. Now there was a club, the Bird Club, that met in Young's Hotel in Boston, Massachusetts. And one of the members of the Bird Club, Senator Charles Sumner, went over to Europe and visited with leading Illuminati kingpins. And for instance, Giuseppe Mazzini. And he came back then and, <clears throat> and got the Bird Club organized into a group to a conspiracy to arm John Brown. Uh, several of the members of the Bird Club were Unitarian pastors who appeared uh, as pacifists while they were sending supplies and guns to John Brown. For instance, we had Unitarian Reverend Higginson and Unitarian Reverend Parker. And then there was Unitarian George Stearns who manufactured lead pipe. If you know how poisonous water is when it's put through lead pipe. And then there was Garrett Smith, who was an Illuminati multimillionaire whose father was best associate with John Jacob Astor the first, another Illuminati kingpin. And then they not only set up this secret group to help John Brown, but they, uh, they pulled their establishment media in line. And so groups like, papers like the New York Times, who had Karl Marx as their correspondent, uh, built John Brown up into a hero. And they sent over a professional revolutionist, a Jewish Freemason named Amschel Bondi, who uh, helped John Brown in places like Bleeding Kansas. And when he was done, then went over into other places in the world to help with other Masonic-inspired uh, revolutions. Now let's look at Ulysses Grant. Ulysses S. Grant was born and named Hiram Grant. He was named after the Masonic sun god Hiram Abiff. And his father was a master mason and the leader of a lodge. His father's name was Jesse Root Grant, where we heard the Root name. Remember Eliah Root and Colonel House? Jesse Root Grant worked for John Brown's father. And when he quit working for John Brown's father, he started working for E.A. Collins. Well, who are the Collins family? The Collins family is one of the top 13 Illuminati bloodlines. Remember the pilgrims? The pilgrims are one of the Puritan groups that came over to New England. When the Puritans came over, there were groups of witches that came over with them. Francis Collins, who came over with one of the early groups of Puritans, was a witch. These witches came over. Now remember, in New England, the state supported the churches. They taxed the people and then gave money to the churches. So it was advantageous to be in an establishment state-sponsored church. So the churches that the witches set up and belonged to, they called themselves the same names as the Puritan churches, which was Congregational and Presbyterian. But after the Civil War, around 1824, the state quit giving these churches money, and so it, be, it no longer was advantageous to uh, continue the name, and so the witches uh, created the Unitarian Church, or well, one of the Collins started the Unitarian Church, which in turn started Yale and Harvard, and there were Illuminati secret societies at Yale before they brought in the Order of the Skull and Bones. Now an example of a, a Unitarian minister who is also Illuminati is Karl Poland. He created their Bund der Jugend in Europe, and he, uh, which was Illuminati front, which also operated behind another Illuminati front, the Swiss Bible Society. But when things got too hot, he came over to Harvard and taught as a Unitarian minister. There was another um, man that was active, uh, noteworthy to note, James Anderson Collins.